Hello YouTube, I'm Master Rolfless and I'm here to give you guys a Planetary Annihilation update of the new Alpha 51118. I just checked my microphone to see it was on because I tried to do this video three times over and it, it fucked up completely. Anyway, so there's a bunch of new features that have been added into the game that creates more in-depth and, you know, a better kind of experience. And I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm just rambling on and on. Basically, new features have been adding, uh, added into the game which allow for you to have a better experience in the game, in-game, as well as out-game, like in this taskbar over here. So we're going to go to the new updated planet editor. Now, in my previous video, I've covered the planet editor beforehand. And now you can name your planet. So I'm going to call my planet the sassy gay friend everyone has. No, no, that, that's offensive, actually, because I'm a sassy gay friend everyone has. I'm going to call myself, I'm going to call it the big brick. Yeah, if you know what I mean. And you can preview your planet and blah, blah, blah. Now, the difference is here between this planet editor and the previous planet editor is that this planet editor is a little bit unstable right now. And there's a lot of glitches and bugs and crashes that can happen to you while using this planet editor. For example, lava is experimental. If you use lava, if you use a lava planet, you could potentially crash your computer. Same with a metal planet. They're still reworking those two. And if you increase your radius, see experimental. Height range, um, no problem, but water height is experimental, and that's about it. So, you might, you want to kind of just stick to Earth, Moon, and Tropical for now until they fix everything. Now, a new feature they've added into Planet Editor is the option to save your planets and play them in matchmaking. So, I'm going to go ahead and save Big Brick, go to Ubernet Games, and then I'm going to go to create a new game. And over here, you can see that you can actually choose between pre-made maps that the um, developers give you so you can go for tropical and each map generally has like a different scale so scale one is the smallest and scale three is the largest so right now we have tropical moon and earth and depending on how big you want it and how much water you want and if you want a moon planet or not you can definitely like have a, a few selections and nitty-gritty stuff it's not as good as a uh, planet editor by any stretch but it's a it's a good substitute Really, if you want to just go like, hey, I'm tired of the 15 moon plants we had back to back. Let's go for a nerf. So let's just um, let's just load our custom. I did make Killzone butt face, and it was a glorious map. But unfortunately, the recording sucked. Anyway, so right now, this is the matchmaking screen. You can see your planet that you chose. Either it's the pre-rendered planets that the developers give you, or the planet that you made. So this is a big brick, and if anyone wants to join, they can. You can also choose between two different commanders, the Delta Commander and the Alpha Commander. Uh, the differences between the two are nion nothing except for aesthetics. So that's pretty much it Anyway, so I'm going to see you guys Back at the um, the in-game screen as I'm going, I'm going to show you the in-game features Keep in mind when building your planet and playing in the planet editor Not only do you have to worry about lava metal and such and such and kind of the schematics But you also have to worry about not making your planet go above 1000 kilometers in diameter because if you do so that gives you a higher chance of slowing down your game anyway so let's just hop right in all right hello guys i'm back and i've just decided to actually just kind of show off some gameplay but from different sort of games so that you guys have a good understanding of the other features that are in the game so right now what's showing right now is um a gameplay that i previously did in which you know i showed off kind of the turret mechanic in this game so Turns have been changed in this game as well as combat units in general in which Before in the past when a combat unit fought another enemy unit It would swivel its turret to face the enemy unit, but then swivel back to its original position Now in the future this has changed now instead of swiveling back to its original position The turret will stay at the same exact position that it first encountered the enemy. So let's say you find an enemy on the left side of you, your turret will now face on the left side, regardless of the fact that you made the turret face north in the beginning. So right now, this kind of shows off a little bit of a good gameplay of how that is right now. And as you can see, a bumblebee is passing by, or will pass by, depending on, you know, the latency issues of kind of the recording and stuff like that. I am recording this uh, pretty much afterwards. Oh, there's a large swarm of bumblebees. Oh god, the honey! Anyway, as you can see, the turrets are actually changing direction. And as you can see right now, they're facing south. And they actually were facing left beforehand. And now they're going to uh, turn again. And as you can see, bam. Now they're permanently turning left. That's pretty much how the turrets are going to be for now on in this game. And as you can also see, before in the past, air um, units were dis 
if they were destroyed in a battle and in combat, the wreckage would just disappear. But now this isn't the case, and just like land units, sea units, and infantry units, wreckage is now going to be shown on the map, which is really good. Could make for some interesting games. I also have another clip to show you guys, which is fairly entertaining, which shows off some of the the kick-ass moments of being in massive air battles and stuff like that, and while killing a lot of air units and seeing all those let the bodies hit the floor, let the bodies hit the floor, let the I forgot the rest of the song. So that's pretty much it uh, for now in terms of, you know, what the update does for towers. I do have a clip coming up of kind of how the AI is going to do things now, so, um, do things. And as you can see, um, over there in the um, northern part of the map, I'm going to bring in a firefly to show you guys right now that the AI airbase and the AI base in general is a very formidable base, by the way. So you see, the AI starts off with normally four count it for uh air factories but the ai can now build uh construct buildings so they can get five air factories six air factories which means a shit ton of bumblebees and interceptors keep in mind however that at this point in time the ai can only build interceptors and bumblebees and that's about it simply because i'm not sure right now this ai is pretty basic for what the planetary annihilation guys have going for them but it's a building uh, block for future uh, future, what was it? A AIs in the future. And so right now, you're going to see the overpoweredness of the AI, really. Well, not the overpoweredness, but just the sheer dominance that the AI can have right now over you in the game. It's pretty scary, because now you have to worry about the AI. Not as much as, like, an actual opponent, but in terms of, oh, can he attack me? Am I prepared for this? And now, you're going to see in the next clip kind of a future um, game in which, yes... There's a lot of fucking bumblebee carcasses and sh uh, whoa, what the fuck? No, nuclear weapon, don't blow up. No, uh, don't worry, friendly fire is not on this game. All right, so pretty much right now you can see two things, uh, three things. One, you see the new anti-nuke launcher. If I can zoom in right now, instead of being like a fucking retard going zoom in, zoom out. And two, you see a nuke launcher, which is why you saw the lopsided Down Syndrome-esque nuke, which I don't know why it derped around like that. And you also see a thousands and thousands of bumblebee carcasses now the reasons why uh, these carcasses exist is simple really i'm too lazy to reclaim and two because the ai keeps throwing out bumblebee after bumblebee after bumblebee it is insane it is crazy it is off the walls retarded and it's hard to deal with so i've been building tower defenses after tower defenses to no avail because he keeps sending out the bumblebees so right now i'm looking into the end nuke launcher and as you can see the anti nuke launcher has had a surprising upgrade in terms of its model quality. No longer does it look like the hideous catapult. It instead looks like a proper anti nuke launcher with three pillars and a nuclear silo in the middle of it, or an, a missile silo in the middle of it. I'm going to zoom in, zoom in in just a bit to show you guys. Yep, there we go. Here's the sexiness of the anti nuke launcher. It definitely looks a little bit badass. Keep in mind that the anti nuke launcher only works. If, it's be if, a, if a nuclear weapon comes by, and it's not a friendly nuclear weapon, that's why it has um, nothing's been triggered yet. So right now, I'm also showing off the nuclear uh, silo right now, just for shits and giggles. Looks pretty cool. Looks pretty handy. Uh, keep in mind that nuclear weapons do a small amount of damage. One damage, I do believe. And they can fire all over the map. And that's a pretty fucking explosion, I must say. So that's pretty much it for the new uh, kind of level of, well not level of, but the, this, is pre this is pretty much it for the new update for Planetary Annihilation. There are a lot of other stuff that have been kept under ropes, including uh, two new orbital units that have just been announced called the Orbital Laser Unit, as well as the Orbital Fabrication Unit. We haven't seen any images of these units or any stats of these units, so that's why I'm not showing them on screen right now for you guys. And... Right now, that's pretty much about it. It is said that the anti that the um, that the nuclear launcher, the missile silo, can actually fire at the orbital units. So that would be really interesting. So in order to counteract maybe orbital lasers that fire down on the planet, you can use nuclear weapons. But that remains to be seen in the future, really. So right now, I annihilate my commander so I can show you guys kind of the AI going herp derp. And as you can see, they have six air, seven air factories over there. A lot of mexes and power plants. Keep in mind that the AI does not listen to the same rules we do. Which means they can build mexes wherever they fucking want. And that's pretty much how it's good to go.
So anyway, that's about it, really. I hope you guys enjoyed this little update video. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, keep being waffle-tastic and keep supporting the channel. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.